And as a young man, he was summoned to the wars Spent his best years with blood on his hands Hey guys, it's Homomoto And it's story time I want to talk to you guys about the time that I got shot in the line of duty. Now, it's not as bad as it sounds. I mean, it was a pretty bad situation, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Typically, when you hear an officer was shot, you always hear some kind of really morbid tale afterwards. My situation was scary as heck, but it came out okay, I guess. What happened, I was uh, on routine patrol in public housing and I got a dispatch call that there was some teenagers gathering outside of one of the housing projects, the apartment complexes that we had. And that would have been Walnut Park Apartments in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, I responded and I didn't run code because it was just a kind of a little curfew violation. It wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, clearly if they're violating curfew, they're still gonna be violating curfew when I get there, so. You know, there's no sense in running emergency code when it's not an emergency. <clears throat> well, upon my arrival at the apartment complex, I didn't have to look too far to find what I was looking for. The first corner I turned, I saw four juvenile. They were standing in a little group in front of one of the apartment buildings. I pulled up beside them, and I said, you know, hey guys, uh, the housing projects in Memphis has a curfew of midnight. It's 2 a.m. I really need y'all to go inside, or, you know, if you don't live here, you're not a guest here, go ahead and leave. But if you live here, or you're a guest here, you know, go ahead and go inside, and everything will be fine. Well, I mean, they were respectful. They said, thank you, officer, you have a good night. You know, I... I started to pull forward. I turned off my lights and started to pull forward. When I say lights, I'm talking about my uh, blue lights on my vehicle. I didn't make it just a few feet, and they were pointing their fingers in the air and going, if you can see this, bloop, 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 like they were shooting at me with their fingers. Well, that's... That's a sign of disrespect to law enforcement. It's also a sign of watch your back, we're gonna shoot you. So I turned my lights back on and put the little car in reverse, and backed up. I said, look guys, you know, I gave y'all a couple options to either leave or go inside. Now I'm gonna have to give you a third option. They said, oh really, what's that? And I said, well, you can have a room for the night in Hotel Poplar, where your accommodations would include a cold hard mattress and a cold bologna sandwich or you can again do what I told you while ago you can either go inside or you can leave so the biggest oldest one I, I guess he was the oldest he was definitely by far the biggest he said uh you gonna take of all five of us to jail and I'm sitting here looking one two three four you know I'm sitting there thinking even a teenage gang member can count to five or four. And my response was, I didn't really think that much of it. I said, yeah, I'll take all four of you to jail. But something didn't feel right. So I start looking around and like, where's number five? Where's number five? And about the time I caught a glimpse of him out of my eye, he was standing kind of to my uh, left shoulder, kind of behind the car a little bit. He hollers out, wrong, there's five, fool, and shots ring out. This guy fired, he just kept firing. He fired, we counted 13 shell casings on the crime scene, all of which went into my light bar and my car. And unbeknownst to me, one of those rounds took out my two-way communication antenna on my car. The last bullet hit me. It hit me in my vest, uh, pretty much right behind my heart. Now, I don't know if any of you guys that are officers on my channel have been shot, but the story is true. If you're ever wearing a vest, it still hurts like heck. So, when I felt the bullet 
head. I put my hand and put it between my back and my vest and felt my skin and it was very numb and uh, it was very wet and oily. Now, mid-August in Memphis, Tennessee, the heat and humidity is extremely high. If you add to the fact that my air conditioner didn't work quite right and the fact that I was wearing a Kevlar vest, that's going to make me sweat a little more. So I pulled my hand out and my hand is covered in sweat and it felt like blood. So first thing in my mind is I've been shot or I've been, you know, the bullet went through my vest. Because at that time they had a couple cases where they had found some supposedly Teflon coated bullets and supposedly those things that go through a bulletproof vest. I can't confirm whether or not that's true or not. I don't know. But that's the first thing that went in my mind. Well, this kid goes to reload. And as he goes to reload, I draw my service weapon and I ordered him to drop the weapon and he pointed it at me again and I, I discharged my weapon twice. Don't know for sure if both rounds hit him, but I know one hit him. Um, it hit him in his leg and we're trying to shoot center mass, but at the time I pulled the trigger, I was kind of trying to go for cover because he was pointing his gun back at me again that he just reloaded. So I hit him and he screamed out, I know the bullet hit. Well, as I went to open my car door, his four buddies, they were wearing like a light type, uh, like a windbreaker type jacket. They pulled the jackets back and all four of them were armed. They started to draw on me. So I threw my car in reverse and floored it. Uh, wasn't really watching what I was doing, which was stupid. But I ended up slamming into one of those big community mailboxes. You know, the ones like for the whole apartment complex. And mail just went everywhere. I mean, it was rain and mail. I managed to get back far enough to where I felt I was safe. And I pulled out of my car and went for cover and was going to engage the suspects. I was trying to call for backup. My uh, radio ID was 7-8 at that time. So I jumped out of the car, 7-8 Central. I've been hit. I need backup and I need an ambulance. 7-8 <sighs> Central. I've been hit. Officer down. I don't know what it was other than God himself that made them stop and turn around and go the other way. I'm very thankful that they did, but I want to tell you that's one of two times in law enforcement I was truly scared. I really thought my life was going to end. I'm going to save the other one for another story time because it's, it's pretty bad too. It had to do with a guy on drugs, but officers out there. I want you to always wear your vest. I know it's protocol and you're supposed to do it anyway, but if you're like me, that was the first time I'd worn my vest in two or three weeks because it was so dang I'm hot. But I want you to wear your vest. It's a situation where you have multiple suspects, follow protocol, call for assistance before you engage the suspects. You know, I made a couple major mistakes like that night that could have cost me my life. And I, I would hate to see some of my brothers in blue you know, go through the same situation, only worse. Guys, that's all I have for this one. I love y'all, and roll tide. I was a storm, and I passed right over you. And I tried to eclipse the sun. In the hopes that you love the tumble and spray. The sky broken by you.